The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. In this video, I'm going to talk about a device that's so useful, you probably don't realize all of the things it's in. It can be used to sense vibrations and movement, detect free fall, and determine orientation in three-dimensional space. So let's learn about these fascinating devices, accelerometers. An accelerometer is an electromechanical device that converts mechanical force into electrical signals. The forces they detect may be static, like gravity, or dynamic, like sensing vibrations and movement. To understand how accelerometers work, we first have to understand what acceleration is. We're used to measuring the speed of cars in miles or kilometers per hour, measuring a distance traveled in a set period of time. Acceleration is the measurement of the change of speed over time. Distance and time are easy to measure, so how do we measure the rate of change? Use the force, Luke. That's right. We need to consider force. Here we look at Newton's laws of motion. Newton's first law states, an object at rest or an object in motion will remain that way unless acted upon by a force. This guy won't move until he is acted upon by a force. And this will keep spinning until it is acted upon by a force. The force of me flicking my finger will cause him to accelerate. Pew! And the force of my finger touching the spinner causes it to decelerate. To get the formula to calculate these forces, we look at Newton's second law of motion, which states, Force equals mass times acceleration. We want to measure acceleration, so let's flip that around. Acceleration equals force divided by mass. In other words, acceleration is the amount of force we need to move each unit of mass. So what forces are we talking about? One constant force used in calculating acceleration is gravity. Acceleration is usually expressed in one of three units of measurement. Meters per second per second, or meters per second squared, a gal or Galileo, defined as one centimeter per second squared, or in standard gravity, measured in Gs. If you've seen any movies or documentaries about fighter jets or astronauts, you've probably heard of G-force. Not that guinea pig movie. And if you've been on a roller coaster, carnival ride, one of those old school playground merry-go-rounds, or even just a swing set, you've definitely felt it. Standard gravity is the nominal gravitational acceleration of an object in a vacuum near the surface of the Earth, usually denoted by G0 or Gn. Meaning, if all other forces are removed, such as air which provides wind resistance, standard gravity is the rate of acceleration at which an object would fall to Earth. 1g is equal to 9.80665 meters, or 32.2 feet per second squared. A small g-force, like less than 1g, would show as a waveform with a small amplitude, while a large g-force, like 8g's, would create a waveform with a much higher amplitude. When looking at accelerometers, you should see a g rating showing the full dynamic range the chip is capable of. This 80XL335 that is common with hobbyists has a set range of plus or minus 3 g's, while this LSM303 found in the BBC Microbit has multiple range options, including 2, 4, 8, and 16 Gs. When in use, one range value is selected. Notice on this chart the correlation between the measurement range and the sensitivity. The 2G setting can only measure a small amplitude of signals, but has a whopping 4096 counts per G, a very high sensitivity. The 8G setting can detect higher amplitude signals, allowing a much larger range of detection. However, it only has 1,024 counts per G, a much lower sensitivity. With a more sensitive setting, the device can detect subtle changes in acceleration. But since the range is limited, any signals with too large an amplitude would get clipped or distorted. 
use a larger range and the device can detect larger signals, but sensitivity is sacrificed. So larger range equals less sensitivity, higher sensitivity equals a smaller detectable range. So how do accelerometers detect g-force? The types of accelerometers you will typically come across are either piezoelectric or MEMS. How piezoelectric accelerometers work is a bit of science witchery. This type has a crystal layer sandwiched between two electrodes. The crystal is a structure made of positive and negative ions. When force is applied, the structure distorts. The electrons of those ions shift around, which generates an electric charge. That charge is proportional to the force that is being applied, so we can use it to measure acceleration. The other and more common type is MEMS. MEMS stands for Microelectromechanical Systems. These are microscopic mechanisms printed directly into ICs. Within these systems, there are sets of fingers or plates, one set that is fixed, and one that is spring-loaded and can move and respond to acceleration. The interlocking fingers form a capacitance between them. When the floating finger moves back and forth, the distance between fingers changes, increasing or decreasing those capacitances. The system can detect these changes in capacitance and use that information to determine acceleration. These measurements typically happen in one direction along a single axis. However, we often want to measure up to three dimensions or axes. Since MEMS accelerometers are printed directly into the substrate of ICs, multiple accelerometers can be printed together into one system or chip to measure multiple axes, X, Y, and Z, one for each direction. A lot of the other integrated chips I've covered on the learning circuit so far are available in through-hole packages that can easily be placed on a breadboard for prototyping. However, accelerometers are quite complex, so they tend to be surface mount only and are usually integrated into other systems or dev boards. In some ICs, accelerometers are paired with a magnetometer, compass, and or gyroscope to detect up to six or nine axes. These units are often called inertial measurement units, or IMUs. Accelerometers are insanely useful. They're so useful, it's basically impossible to list all of their uses. But here are a few. They're used for orientation and movement control in video game controllers. Yeah! They are how my DIY VR system knows the movement of my head. They're how I navigate my smartwatch. They're what tell my AirPods to pause when I take one out of my ear. They help keep drones in aircraft stable. When I'm trying to explain to people what an accelerometer is, I always use the example of a phone because that's something that they have on, on them in their pocket and it's something that they've seen being used. So when you're watching a video on YouTube and you turn your phone sideways and YouTube goes to landscape, that's an example of an accelerometer in use. So your phone has an accelerometer that knows when it's being tilted I actually use this in one of my videos, so I get I use some JavaScript to get this data out so that I make a, a moving VR headset. These devices are so small and so useful, the possibilities are endless for what they could be used for. So what ideas do you have? Whether you have a project in mind or just an idea that came to you, I'd love to hear what you think about accelerometers. Post your thoughts and questions on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning!